Welcome to Flory Models Kit Review Time. Today we've got Trumpeter's brand new 148th scale. This is the MiG 21 MF. Now, obviously, there's lots of different versions with MiGs out there. The MF version means it's got that slightly bold spine down here at the back, slightly different on the tail end and everything else like that. Uh, and until now, really, you had the Academy. You could get an upgrade set for it to put it into one. So it's nice to have one straight out of the box. Now, recently, Trumpeter have done some very, very nice kits. So we're hoping this one is going to be the same. So as you can see, lovely box art at the front there. We've got the uh, East German markings of it down there. So a quick run around the box. We've got some of the markings and we can see, this. So we're gonna talk about it in a moment. We've got some nice metal ones as well as that sort of the uh, German one. And then working around. So your kit number for this one is 02863. Okay, and you've got some more options down there. So we obviously got the Polish one, uh, we've got the Czech one, and we've got a couple of Iraqi ones down here as well. Uh, and I've actually built this one the hard way of actually doing a full conversion on it to make it up to the MF standard from the Academy one with all the goodies. So it's nice to see that we can do it straight out of the box now again. Okay, so usual thing. Very nice box. No problem with that. We'll just stand that there if it'll stand. Well, no. Okay, look at that, absolutely crammed in the box, totally to the brim, very nice to see, okay. So, usual thing, we're gonna have a doll through here and try and pull out the instructions, which literally fit. I can get them out even, would be a grand help. So, the usual bits of bump down there, as you can see, we've got the tool section and the various things, okay. Uh, so, what we'll do is we'll pop that there, and that can go there for a moment, a little bit of photo etch as well. So, looking down at the instructions, we've got the colour fallout, which we'll look at in a moment. So, usual way of doing it, we've got the parts call out on the tree. I hope you find your bits all a bit easier. So, I've got two tyres down there. Now, are they rubber or resin? It'd be interesting to see. Okay. So, straight off, we've got a nice detailed cockpit by the looks of it. So, we've got some nice detail going in here. Obviously, we'll have a look at the parts properly in a moment. But we've got side walls. Looks like we've got a nice seat, things like that. Okay. So, definitely an improvement on the older kits. Then, it's straight in with the actual uh, nose wheel well, as you can imagine. But it looks, again, looking like we've got some nice detail down in there and everything else. The main base. Okay. So, this is the main gear base that's going to be going down there again. It's looking promising very promising. We've got a full length engine, which is actually quite a nice touch. Usually it's just a push in at the end. So that looking quite good down in there. Okay, and then usual thing with MIGs as we know, we can put it all together. So we've got the top of the instrument panel going down, down here. The radar section uh, for the front down in the very important nose system down there. Then we've got the nose wheel uh, well and uh, gear itself going in there. And then we've actually got the cockpit, those main uh, gear wells, the engine, and then a few lumps and bumps, which are obviously specific to this particular type. Uh, okay, and then we've got the instrument coming over the top. So it makes you wonder if this is gonna be able to be hinged so we can show off that detail. Otherwise, we're gonna be in one of those situations where you can do all this lovely work underneath and then never see it. But if this is hingeable, i.e. as MIGs do, this hinges upwards so they can get into that, it will be a very nice touch, okay? A little air scoop on the back, the different type of nozzle which goes on the rear, okay, and then it's in. So we've got the all important tail, so the tail is slightly different to other MIGs on this particular variant, okay. We've got the little speed brake system that pops out on the back, open or closed, you've got the option there. Looks like we've got a one piece canopy, okay, which, let's face it, this should be a two piece, so it'd be interesting to see if that is not the case. Uh, if it is just a one piece, that's going to make that a bit of a nightmare. Okay, so, and then underneath, so we're going to go underneath, so we've got the gun pod, which obviously fits just down here underneath the back, the various lumps, bumps, the uh, dorsal fin, or it's not dorsal, is it petrol fin, the one on the bottom, down there, okay, wheel wells galore, or as you can imagine, speed brakes open or closed, which is a very nice touch, okay, then we've got the different types of uh, fuel tank, or center line tank on the back there, okay, and the other speed brake system as well. Obviously open or closed as you can see down here. So it looks like we've got nice weapons fits and fuel tank fits. Very nice to see we've got movable um, actual control surfaces so we can slightly droop them uh, in the power down mode. Opening up the holes, obviously you can imagine for all the pylons, landing light only in the closed position by the looks of it. Pylons going on, same for the other side. Then it's a case of bringing this all together and this is where you're gonna have to be a little bit careful but it looks like we're covered. Instead of having your traditional sort of you know slot uh, and the gap for it we've got pegs that are going to hold this in now the MIG does have a slightly is it adhedral the one that pokes downwards uh, wing position on this so that needs to be put right okay tailplanes going on obviously the pitot tubes and the uh, sensors on the front 
okay then it's in with the wheels okay and I'm just looking at it main tire I've got a feeling it's going to be rubber okay that's going to be down in there popping those in a couple of other lumps and bumps same for the other side then we've got the rockets and weapons so you're pretty standard your unguided uh, UB32 rockets uh, we've got an R3 uh, and we've got an R3S, okay, so we've got the radar version or the seeker version uh, for the infrared. <coughs> and then it's a case of putting those all together exactly how you want it. Now, I'm comparing this very much to what I think is the best one out there at the moment, and that would be the Eddard one. The Eddard one was very, very nice. A couple of years old now, but that was my sort of go-to kit, all right, for doing these things. Lovely call out for these. So as you can see, we've got the German markings down there, and it is covered in uh, stencil data, which I didn't realize. I don't think I've ever built one with that metal on it before. But anyway, different colors. The metal finish down there, which we're gonna talk about in a moment. Okay, and then we've actually got this very nice Polish one, and I do like this two-tone gray the Polish one does. Uh, if I wasn't gonna be doing a metal finish one, that is definitely the color I'd be going for, okay? Czech version, very nice as always. And then we've got these Iraqi ones down here, and as I say, I have done this one. This was the captured one uh, for that MiG-21, all right? So as I say, some very nice reference photos out there if you wanna have a look. That's with the green, or you can have it in that sort of dark earth color right the way over it. So generally, very nice. If we go straight into the decals, so, decals themselves. Okay, they look pretty good actually. Yeah, they actually don't look too bad at all. Okay, just looking around on them. A lot of that stencil data obviously is just generic blurb, but it looks very good generic blurb, if you know what I mean. Um, Anything that's bigger than you can't read it is an actual wording. Everything below that I think is just halfway there. But my eyesight must be getting old now. But there we go. But as you can see, we've actually got these down here is for the actual cockpit detail. So if you wanted to, you could then pre-shade the color. Okay, so put the cockpit color down and then put this over the top, a good softener and get them to bury in. But we'll have a look about it as well. But generally, I think we're pretty much there. It's nice to see that this red is slightly cut back a little bit on these. It's not as strong and as vibrant as bright red stars on there and all the rest of it. it looks like they're slightly faded back, just a couple of degrees, which is a nice touch because it gives a more weathered, pleasant look to your uh, your actual markings, okay? Photo Edge, I haven't got a great deal here. We've got a couple of fins. Uh, this is the one down behind, uh, the, on the front end down here somewhere. Okay, a couple on the back, all right. And generally, I think that's a couple of harness straps just down there. So nothing you'd really go overboard over. Let me pop that down. All right, then we get in. Okay, let's have a look at these because this is what I was interested about. Rubber tires, I am not a fan of, if we're honest, okay? For a speed point of view, I think they're great, but it's very, very hard to do weight on wheels with rubber. Um, the only way I might experiment with these is to actually heat them up and melt them down and get them to squash down. But generally, it means cutting them and trying to cut rubber, as we know, isn't the actual easiest. Generally, though, actually, I don't think they're too bad. Uh, they've got a nice pattern to them. There's no giant center seam in them. We've got no wording on the side or anything else like that, but I don't suppose they have. But if you're gonna do rubber wheels, do all three. Just don't do two on the back and then a, a plastic one on the front because that's not gonna work. All right, so, usual thing, <clears throat> trumpeter slash hobby boss. Very nice protecting your kit. Okay, so we're just um, right, right, out of the way. And then we can have a look down in here. So this is a sprue D uh, for your overalls. You can see it down there. Generally, I'm looking around on it and that actually looks very nice. We've got some very nice, in fact, it may be too nice. It's very, very fine detailing all over this one. Uh, lots of riveting, as you might imagine on sort of a classic Cold War aircraft. But generally looking around, we've got no real flash. Uh, we've got no massive burring or anything else like that going on with any of these parts, the pita tube actually and things like that are quite nice, all the activators. The air scoops are all hollowed out as well, which is a nice touch. But generally, if we just move this over here, you can see the details, very, very nice indeed. We've got no problem with them at all. They seem to be all there. You know, as you work your way around here, it is very nice, very clean, you know, with no problems at all on them, which is quite a nice touch, okay? You can see them all down there. On the inside, as you can imagine, we've got no detail because there is nothing, all right? But it's nice to see that we've got the speed brake and we don't have any 
Um, you know, problems with that. There's no ejector pin marks on the inside. Got some very shallow ones on the back of this tailpipe here, but nothing you'd actually see. It's too far forward in these areas. The rudder, I assume this is, looks very nice. No problem with that at all. Actually, that actually is very, very nice. I do like the look of that. Okay, next big one obviously will be the wings. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So as you can see, the wing detail is very, very nice on this one. If we just drop the cameras down just a little bit more, you can probably see them a little bit more. Okay, very nice detail. You see that riveting detail popping out? That is on a par with Eddard, with no problem at all. Very nice, clean, crisp, uh, all of that, no problem at all. So you've got very nice details from the inside to these, uh, the actual um, in, uh, wheel wells themselves. That is actually really, really nice. Very sharp, very crisp. This nose one as well. We can see down here again, nice details on the inside. Sorry, this is the main gear ones uh, coming down, but the riveting and the way they put that together is very, very accurate. Now it just sort of happens. I have some very nice reference shots of a MiG-21 that I got in the US. Um, so I'll be using that one. Uh, some very nice details. I have to say this, the actual riveting detail just looks very, very nice, very refined. I catch it in the light on the close-up. You can probably see it, you know, just bumping through there. Let me try and catch it so it pings out. You can see it. It's the trouble. We've got so many studio lights here. You can't see detail like you used to. You can see it there. Some very nice details on all of those coming through. I like all of that. Okay. I'm looking at the tail. Okay, so the tail itself, as you can imagine, you can see again, beautifully detailed, some very nice riveting, and all those sections down there again. Again, it's got a lovely texture to it. It's very fine, very detailed. This texturing on here isn't bad enough to warrant it having loads of coats of primer first. I'm planning on building this one as in a metal finish, and I'm gonna actually be using on this build, which will be up in a couple of weeks time to be honest, uh, the Vallejo uh, acrylics. Uh, so this is their metal coat stuff. So we're gonna be giving that a whirl. See we did the MIG, uh, sorry, the um, F-104 Starfighter in AK. So just for balance, we're gonna have a go with these on this one. So it'd be interesting to see how they pan out and work against each other. So if you are interested, then hang around Florian Models and I will be doing that build literally starting on it next week. Right, now this is lovely. Okay, as you can see, we've got some fantastic details down in here. This is what we saw in the instructions. This wheel well looks absolutely beautiful, no problem with that at all. Okay, back of the seats and nice details. Even the cockpit just out of the back looks absolutely lovely. Some very nice details all over this. The wheel wells on the blind side, as you can see just down in here, we've got some great details on all the blind side is no problem at all. Okay, which is actually amazing when you think this detail for the inside of the cockpit here is actually the blind side to the mold. So very, very a clever way of doing it on there. Okay, so that's what I mean. When I say blind side, this is what I would call the top side because all the ejector pins on the sprue are underneath, okay? So this is what I call the top side. The underside is what I call the blind side. This is normally where you get all the ejector pins and all the bits that don't matter, as you can't see, so they can just be pushed out, okay? And in recent years, we've had a development where you don't get ejector pins on every part because you don't need it. So what they tend to do now is, as you can see these guys down in here, very nice detail, no ejector pins, but they put extra bits of sprue on to get it out of the mold. And that's what's been missing for kits for many, many years, okay? That way you don't need an ejector pin. Other things where it doesn't matter. So for instance, this is the blind side, if you like, for the actual main gear, all right? There isn't. So what there is, you've actually got ejector pins on the part because you can't see it, it doesn't matter. So that's push it out, all right? And it's that level of care and detail is what I think has brought the hobby on so much more than it used to be. No more do we have horrible ejector pins just chucked in everywhere just to make the molding process easier to spit it out at the end of the day. But actually all of that detail on there is absolutely fantastic. I have a quick run around on the close up cam. As you can see, some very nice details on all of these parts. No problem at all on that. Very, very good. Okay, so what else we got? Let's have a look at the tailplanes and the engine. So as I said, we've got a full length engine, but you've got no way of seeing it. 
So uh, another one of those completely useless times. The tailplanes are in two halves, okay, so they are just gonna be a standard fit together, but again, you can probably catch it in the light, got beautiful details on all of these. All right, a little bit of release agent on that one, just felt that, okay. Generally though, the detail for the exhaust, you're not gonna see this guy anyway, this is the intake or the inlet fan, okay, and uh, obviously got the afterburner ring as well, that's quite nicely molded, the ring itself. The gear legs are a little bit disappointing, shall we say, this has actually got a lot of ejection uh, release mold on it. Can feel it I'm squeaking now all right this is that nose wheel we were talking about which is a bit of a shame but it's hubbed and all the rest of it and to be honest if you're gonna do it just do it in plastic and I'll flatten it if not don't worry about it all right so generally I have to say very nice on all of these and even the actual engine which you're not gonna see uh, doesn't look too bad at all all right you could if you wanted to be a bit of a martyr and cut the back end off make a ramp super detail it all let's face it that's how Buster started <laughs> Right, so we've got duplicate sprue down here. So this is the weapons fit. So this is your um, radar guided uh, missiles down here. We've actually got the rockets. And as was pointed out to me by Adam on the live show, you can see they are hollow all the way through. The camera catches it best. So these are actually hollow, which is very, very unusual to have them, especially on a 48th kit where these are completely hollowed out. Let's face it, normally they just sit there with bits in there that make them look like rockets. Tail end pipe as well, again, is hollowed out, it's like a colander. So normal thing, we've got the fuel tanks here. This is that slip tank, the thin one that is gonna go underneath. Okay, the pylons again, very nicely done. No ejector pins, nothing like that on there. I have to say, this is getting a huge thumbs up from me, this kit. So here we've got the more traditional um, uh, fuel tank, centerline tank, this is just the standard one. You could get another two and put them on the wings. I think on the MF could carry them on the wings as well. So we've got the infrared version, uh, it's the Russian sidewinder uh, down there. All right, so we've got the fins for it, the pylons and the different tank, which is fair enough. Okay, and then down here, we should have bits for the cockpit. So there we go, this is pretty standard. So there we go, we've got the bits for the cockpit seating and all the rest of it, some nice texture onto there. The front uh, panel, actually that is very, very nice. We do like that. Uh, that detail on the front there is absolutely exquisite because obviously this is normally where you put a little bit of detailing on MIGs to tidy them up and all the bits and pieces just like that. Okay, and then we've actually got the, the seat, back of the seat, the mechanism for the firing on the actual seat and we've actually got the hubs as you can see down there as well, and we've got the base of the seat just down here on its own. Now, the only thing I haven't seen, and I am, there it is, was the actual clear parts. And I must admit, I was having a bit of a worry there. So, let's face it, Hobby Boss slash Trumpeter, clear parts are legendary for being good. So let's just assume this is, and we can see did I do that? Probably. Okay, we can see it is in two parts. The instructions call it in a one part. I was thinking that would be ridiculous and I'm lucky that it's not. Very nice job down there. So thing is you want to paint the inside of this because it'll be a different color to the outside. Okay, and things like that. So we've got the lights, the HUD uh, and things like that on there. That is absolutely exquisite, crystal clear. No problem with that. We have hardly any definition change or anything else like that. Obviously these side ones you're going to get a bit but generally looking through, that's a very nice clear part indeed. So there we go, that is Trumpeter's uh, new MiG-21 MF. Now, as I said, I am gonna be building this one, and if you're watching this live, and here we are in what we now, the 8th of January, I'm gonna be starting this one next week. So over the next couple of weeks, you're gonna see this one built, done, and we're gonna be using the Vallejo uh, metalizer type paints, these are the, the acrylic version on this particular MiG. So we're gonna be doing it in a nice, shiny uh, Russian color uh, with the nice bright stars, and then obviously weathering it, but really focusing on the kit itself, see how it goes together and everything else, but really going to be focalizing on the actual Vallejo acrylic metal colors and seeing if they are as good as I'm hoping they are. Okay, so please join me for that literally next week if you're watching this live or go and have a look for it on the Flora Model site and you'll be able to find the full review on the paint as well as the full build on this particular one. So there we go, this is definitely a must have kit. Is it as good as the Edarb one? Again, I think Trumpeter's plastic that they use is a little bit more agricultural, shall we say, it's a little bit more gritty than the actual, the Edard one. The Edard one is a very, very fine, crisp plastic and all the rest of it. The level of detail is definitely on par. I haven't built either yet, so I can't comment on the build quality, but definitely for Trumpeter, and obviously with the cost of it, it'd be a lot cheaper. I think this is definitely a must-have kit. <laughs>